everyone, this is Matt Two Show and Intro Stats, and today we're looking at uh, doing another of our hypothesis tests. So we've kind of been in this introduction to hypothesis testing unit, and today we're looking at a very famous test, the one population mean average hypothesis test. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as a t-test. T-tests are very popular in statistics, and this is a test uh, involving the mean average, the population mean average, and uh, we use the t-test statistics, so that's where it gets its name, a t-test. So let's kind of review a little bit of uh, stuff we've been going over. Um, again, the steps to doing a hypothesis test. Uh, again, we want to figure out what the claim is, what the null hypothesis, H0, alternative hypothesis, HA, what type of test are we doing. We should also choose a significance level. So we kind of talked about type 1 and type 2 errors and how to choose significance levels. Um, we, uh, again, want to collect our sample data and make sure our sample data uh, uh, meets assumptions to do the test. So is the data... Uh, relatively unbiased and do we think it's representative of the population. We want to also calculate uh, all the uh, statistics associated with the hypothesis test. So we need the, the test statistic, critical values, p-value, all those, all those uh, important statistics. Uh, it's always good to use a computer software to really calculate that. I'll do a little bit of calculating today. Uh, just to give you the idea of what computers are doing, but you really should be doing this with a computer, not doing this by hand. Um, again, uh, if, then once we get the, the numbers, now it's the hard part of all doing all this analysis, trying to figure out what all are, are all these numbers, the test statistic and the p-value telling us, right? Um, is it significant? Does the sample data sort of significantly disagree with the null hypothesis? Or could it just be sampling variability or random chance? Um, we'll be able to reject the null or fail to reject the null. Remember we said if the p-value was lower than the significance level, we would reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value was higher than the significance level, uh, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, your conclusion, that we're going to write a conclusion that in, uh, addresses claim and evidence. So these are kind of our steps to doing a hypothesis test. And uh, we're going to kind of go through uh, an example. All right. So uh, the example is, uh, we're testing the claim that the population mean average amount of money spent when COC stat students eat out is $11. So we uh, had a... Um, sort of a census of the Math 140, uh, our statistics students, in the fall 2015 semester. We asked them, how much on average do you eat, when you eat out, how much on average do you spend? Um, now again, um, uh, and then our sample data came out to be, the sample mean was $11.898, uh, so 11.898. Our standard deviation was 6.043. Remember, that's the letter S. The sample mean is usually denoted by the, le the letter X bar, an X with a bar over it usually means a sample mean. N is our sample size. There was a total of 324 stat students in the data. And since this is a one population t-test, it is important to think about degrees of freedom, uh, especially if we're looking up critical values and things like that. Those are going uh, to be based on the degrees of freedom. Remember, the t-curves differ for every sample size. You get different numbers depending on what your sample size and what your degrees of freedom is. Uh, degrees of freedom for one population is usually n minus 1. So um, this really is just n minus 1. That's the degrees of freedom. And it came out to 323. So we're really using a t-curve uh, with the degrees of freedom 323. Now, anytime you're dealing with quantitative data, it's always important to look at the shape of the data set. So I did actually put this data into uh, a program, Cato, and I actually calculated a histogram. By the way, I could have calculated the histogram also on StatKey. StatKey has a great um, uh, quantitative uh, uh, analysis uh, section that does histograms and dot plots and box plots. But it does look a little bit skewed to the right. If you guys remember, we kind of talked about shape. 
Uh, the highest, the center is where the highest bar is or close to it. Looks like we do have a little bit longer tail to the right than to the left. So a little skewed right on our, on our shape there. All right, so we're going to see if we can go ahead and use this, date, this data okay, to, to kind of do this test. So we're testing the claim that the population mean is $11, all right? So again, we got to first start with what's the null and alternative hypothesis? So we said that um, in the steps to writing a null and alternative hypothesis, start with what they, what's the claim? What did they actually say? Well, the we're testing the claim that the population mean is $11. Not greater than $11, not less than $11, is $11. So... Uh, sounds like that's an equal to, right? If you remember the Greek letter mu, it looks like a U with a tail on it, is usually used for a population mean. Now equal to would be a null hypothesis. So I'm going to go ahead and write uh, mu is equal to $11. No, notice I'm not putting 0.11, it's not a percentage, it's $11, so leave it as 11. Uh, and that would be my claim. So I want to go ahead and write the word claim next to that. So that I know that's what, the, that's what they said up here, that we're, we're sort of testing that claim. Now, I need to figure out the opposing view. So what's the, since they didn't give me both views, I would just kind of think about opposites a little bit. What would be the opposite of, um, what would be the opposite of equals $11? Well, we said not equal, right? Different. So it sounds like our, our alternative hypothesis is going to be mu is not equal to $11. Remember, anything with an equal to is always a null hypothesis, H0. Anything that doesn't have an equal to part, an equal to sign, that's going to be an alternative hypothesis. Now, what we said was if HA was greater than, greater than points to the right, so that would be a right tail test. If HA was less than, less than points to the left, that would be a left tail test. This one's a not equal. Not equal kind of means less than or greater than. Anything different than uh, 11. So that we refer to that as a two tail test. So this not equal right there is why it's a two tail test. The not equal sign in the HA. All right, so we got our known alternative hypothesis down. We know what type of test we're dealing with. In terms of the data, we want to make sure this is a quantitative data set, right? This is quantitative, this is not numerical measurement data from one, one sample and from uh, hopefully representative of one population. All right, so now we got our sample data, but let's check assumptions. Does this sample data good enough to say something about the population? It doesn't do us much good to take bad bias data and try to test a population with it because it's going to be way off. So we want to, we want, we're hoping this sample data will be somewhat representative. So here's the assumptions for a one population mean uh, hypothesis test. And these are, the, um, these are the same assumptions as we did in, um, as we did in uh, confidence intervals. So the one population mean average assumptions, uh, random sample or representative of the population, Individuals within the sample, individual observations should be independent of each other. And sample size should be at least 30, 30 or higher, or, or the sample should be normal. So the, so the classic 30 or normal requirement. And these are all the same requirements that we talked about when we did confidence intervals. So really the same ideas. Now, okay, let's see. Was this a random sample? No, it wasn't. Actually, it was a census of just one semester uh, at the college, uh, one semester of SAT students. So it was not a random sample, but eh, you could probably make the argument that that one semester of SAT students is probably representative of all the population of all SAT students at the college. Um, we, might, we might be able to get away with making that assumption. So even though this data wasn't a random sample, I think it was probably pretty good. I mean, at least it, so you can make the argument that it does represent the population. All right, the hardest one always is the independence requirement, right? The independence requirement. What we usually said is if you have a small random sample, 
from a large population, then usually it's going to pass independence. You're not going to accidentally get people that are related to each other. This, however, because it wasn't a random sample, and stat students may come from the same classes, they may be friends, they may eat out together. That could be a problem. So we're not sure about that independence. I'm going to go ahead and assume, just for the sake of doing the test, that it did meet this independence requirement, though I'm not totally set on that. Um, independence is always something that we have to kind of think about. Now, what about the 30 or normal? Well, we said that our histogram looked a little skewed right. So we got skewed right was our, was our shape. Whenever you're testing the 30 or normal requirement, always look at a histogram or some kind of dot plot or something a way to check the shape. Um, and then what was the sample size? Well, it's here. There was 324 people. So remember, it has to be in the 30 or normal requirement. It doesn't require both. It just has to be one or the other. So either the sample was normal. This one was not normal. So it did not pass the normal requirement. Uh, but it, the sample size was bigger than 30, right? So we learned in our study of sampling distributions in the central limit theorem that the sampling distribution would look pretty normal if our sample size was over 30 and it would fit pretty well with a t-curve. Right? That's kind of what, what this is all about. We are doing a t-test, right? So we want to make sure that the data is going to fit with a, with a t-distribution. And this will pass. So this will pass the 30 or normal requirement. So even though it wasn't normal, it was over 30. And because it's an OR statement, it doesn't have to be both. Just one of those two has to be true for it to pass. So it does pass the 30 or normal requirement. All right, so we got the null and alternative hypothesis. We got the assumptions. So now what do we need? Well, now we need our test statistic and our critical values and all that. Again, uh, an easy way to do this, we could stick this data into... Uh, stat Cato or another program like Stat Cato and just click hypothesis test and it's going to basically spit out all of these numbers and that's usually how most computer programs work. Uh, you, you put in the, the numbers and you're going to get your test statistic and your p-value and all of that. But today we're kind of looking at how are things calculated and how